Welcome back to PC Wits Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at part two of the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming 7 motherboard. Benchmarks, that's what we're going to do today. In part one, if you haven't watched it, we did an overview of the motherboard itself. Great looking board, lots of features, especially with that gaming armor. But, you know, the high quality features are just one thing. The construction and the longevity of the board, that's another. And really this system is meant to last. With the Intel Core i5-9400F CPU, I'm running it at 3.9 gigahertz stable. All six cores are running at that speed, thanks to the ASRock Phantom Gaming 7 board, which is getting it nice and stable in this awesome looking gaming PC that you can see right here. Now, pause the screen at any time. If I'm going too fast, you can take a look at this slowly at your own pace. I've got the system at defaults with the XMP profile, but I did try overclocking a little bit to 3600 megahertz and it worked just great. Shows you that the uh, board is pretty stable and the BIOS does support overclocking very nicely. But I'm gonna run the benchmarks at this XMP setting, okay? As you can see right here, I'm in Windows 10. I've got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 paired up on this machine. We're going to start off with the ADA64 CPU and memory benchmarks, which concentrate more or less on the bandwidth of the read, write, copy, and the speed, the latency of the memory as well. So we're looking at all of that, and you can see here a little bit of a boost in memory when I overclock the memory to uh, 3600. But going back to default memory speeds, you can see here how this system positions itself compared to other CPUs on other boards. So very well done here on the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming 7. Very good results. Very happy to see how this positions itself. Again, much faster than these other previous generation CPUs, especially some 8-core CPUs. Now you can see here that this CPU is not hyper-threaded. This one here is just 6 cores and 6 threads. And on the pass mark rating here, you can see the performance test 9.0. We're looking at the CPU mark more specifically, but really overall it's giving me four to five star rating. So that's pretty darn good out of five stars. You can see my system here, the score, how it rates to other CPUs that uh, were tested. And again, remember this CPU is just about 140 uh, US dollar CPU so pretty darn good uh, bang for the buck that you're getting here now when I compare this system against the Ryzen 5 2600 uh, or a previous generation Intel Core i5 it still does really well you can see here my scores and again keep in mind this motherboard is under $200 the CPU is under $150 I mean you're getting great performance for what the price is and Intel isn't cheap so the fact that uh, this system is actually outperforming um, other hyper threaded CPUs it's pretty impressive to see okay and again I am overclocking and hard uh, making sure that this is at 3.9 gigahertz so I can get some smooth gaming on 1080p high quality settings all the way on every game that I play here you can see here also Strange Brigade, again, on high settings. It goes all the way up to 233 uh, frames per second. On average, it's getting about 163 frames per second. The lowest it goes is about 90 around there. Um, again, if you're playing online multiplayer, you're going to get smooth results again. You don't really need always a hyper-threaded CPU because uh, games these days are still um, not able to fully utilize that. But, you know, there are some games that are really, really CPU intensive, like uh, Ashes of uh, Singularity here. This uh, expansion pack uh, is quite intense. Uh, a lot of stuff going on on the screen, so it definitely puts the uh, system to the test. Um, overall, I should say that the Cinebench results were pretty much on par with what I've seen listed for the same type of CPU. So when it comes to the CPU, single core and multi core uh, performance you can see there again how this processor behaves and performs compared to other processors and uh, overall I mean like I said in my part one loving all the features that this packs in uh, even though it's a mainstream uh, mid-range board it's not a high-end board I mean for under $200 look at all the features that you're getting here um, and you really have to spend more money on higher-end boards so between the board the CPU, 
I mean, you could really save some serious money. Again, you don't have to break the bank. A nice uh, RTX 2060 uh, on here is more than enough to get some serious gamers uh, playing smoothly online and on high settings. So there you have it. Comment below. Let me know what you think about this awesome system. If you're interested in seeing part one, I'll add the link right here for you to watch. And again, I'd like to thank AS Rock for providing it. Thank you for watching.